Greetings folks, Sealer here. Today's replay is from my good colleague Infidel, who is sailing in the premium tier 9 US Navy destroyer, the USS Benham. This is actually the second of two Benham replays that he sent to me recently. Uh, the first one he did a stupid amount of damage, but it was in a loss. Uh, and that game was more of a reflection of how poorly teams can play. Uh, and didn't make as compelling of a watch as this one. Now we are still going to see uh, some really excellent results from Infidel, so uh, no disappointment on that front. Uh, but like I said, this is going to be a more compelling watch, I think. So this is a Tier 9 domination battle here on Two Brothers. There are lots of destroyers and battleships in play, as well as one Tier 8 aircraft carrier on each team. Now Infidel is running a full torpedo build on his Benham, and uh, that gives him a reload of 65 seconds. Uh, this uh, torpedo bow already has some significant controversy associated with it, and that's partially a reflection of the title of the video. Um, the uh, Benham, for those who are unfamiliar, has two sets of quadruple torpedo launchers on each side of the ship, allowing her to put out 16 torpedoes at a time, and with a 65 second reload, uh, that's pretty scary. These torpedoes have a 10.5 kilometer range, they go, I believe, 65 knots, uh, although with the torpedo tubes modification, one upgrade in slot three is Infidel's going to avoid some torpedoes here coming from the uh, Delta cap. Uh, but uh, with the torpedo tubes modification, one upgrade in slot three, uh, these torpedoes will actually be go doing in excess of 68 knots. Uh, the Alpha is 15,200. Uh, so while I think in many ways she's been... Um, sort of characterized as a 16 torpedo uh, Fletcher. She isn't quite that way. The Fletcher's torpedoes, although they have the same range, uh, have a much higher alpha at 19,033, or at least the upgraded torpedoes. Uh, and the Fletcher has quite a bit more health. So one of the downsides of the Benham is that uh, she actually starts with a pretty low health pool at a uh, little over 15,000. Uh, and uh, with survivability expert that... Um, that uh, Infidel has here. Uh, he gets the health up to 17,650. So uh, the opponents took both Alpha and Bravo at the start. Uh, I think uh, Infidel and his allied Yugimo here were quite nervous about moving into the Delta Cap with the presence of the Kronstadt, which has now been uh, pretty well pushed off. Do have an allied Iowa pushing in as well. So now's a good time to push in, uh, grab this cap and start getting some additional points for the team. Uh, neither team has taken down a ship, although again, with the opponents having uh, two caps for a little while, they do have uh, a modest point lead. Uh, looking over at, oh, not, ooh, <laughs> I forgot about this. So, uh, um, Infidel did send some predictive torps based on the radio location. He ends up taking out the opposing Benham. <laughs> that was south of, of Delta. I had forgotten about that. But uh, yeah, nice little uh, predictive torpedo there. But uh, very rapidly thereafter, uh, two destroyers, uh, including the Yugimo uh, that was here with uh, Infidel, takes the Benham's torpedoes. And then the Mahan that was over at uh, the Alpha Cap has already been taken out. So has also been taken out, excuse me. So uh, the Allies are working with a one-ship deficit and they uh, their point lead is... Um, or their point deficit is also increased. So Infidel's calling target on the crunch. I really do want to get this uh, radar cruiser off the flank. Ooh, there's the Fletcher. Uh, Fletcher, given his profile and the fact that he's turning away, means that he has sent torpedoes uh, likely towards the uh, the Iowa here, who's kind of front and center. Uh, one thing that I think I suspect Infidel found uh, kind of frustrating in this match. Your infidel is dropping smoke for the the Iowa, hoping to give him some opportunity to get turned around. Uh, the uh, Iowa, if he fires his guns, is going to get detected. He's, his gun bloom is just too large. Uh, so if I were the Iowa, I would use this opportunity to get turned around and get out. Ooh, there, um, infidel lands a couple of torpedoes on the, I think that's the Georgia, uh, so, again, taking advantage of the very good rate of uh, fire on the torpedoes. Now, his radio location has switched to the uh, southwest side of Delta. Um, so, it's uh, not clear which ship might be out there. I don't think all of the destroyers have been accounted for at this point. Uh, we The Benham was taken out. We know the Fletcher is in the far east, and the Akatsuki was in the far west. 
don't know if we've seen, oh i guess i suppose no we have the tushkin has also been uh, identified so it's not one of the destroyers it's one of the other ships that we haven't seen yet so uh again uh, more torpedoes going out toward the georgia i'm not sure why the uh, uh iowa didn't use the opportunity to get out uh with the smoke screen he stayed in the smoke presumably fired his guns made himself visible again and was simply focused out by the opponent so uh, allies are still working with a one ship deficit couple more torpedoes on the Georgia and some more torpedoes going in. Uh, but now Infidel has gotten uh, lit up by airplane, so he definitely needs to get out. Uh, one thing that I was starting to mention earlier that I imagine was kind of frustrating for Infidel during this match was how far off uh, most of his battleships were playing, especially on the west flank. Uh, they had three battleships that were playing very far from the objective, were not in a position to support their Chengmu, the Mahan, uh, or the Chapayev that had tried to set up relatively close to the cap to keep things detected. Uh, and uh, so now the entire west flank has been wiped out of destroyers and the one cruiser that was over there. So the battleships are uh, basically playing blind uh, against uh, the, well, the Tashkent's going to keep himself visible but uh, with his gunfire, but the Akatsuki that was over on the uh, uh, one line, we haven't seen for a long time. Uh, and again, those battleships have no way other than maybe the carrier to try to locate them. Uh, opponents have moved back into Delta, and it is the Georgia, uh, and provided that the Azuma that's uh, north, uh, sort of uh, north, northeast of uh, Delta can uh, put fire on that Georgia. In fact, the Georgia is very low health. Uh, try to keep that cap reset if at all possible. And we also see torpedoes going out toward the Gnais now. So this is a reflection of sort of the, one of the key strengths of the Benham is that uh, because she can send, you know, f what for most destroyers would be two complete sets of torpedoes, uh, but she can she sends them in different directions. In this case, Infidel does land a few more torpedoes this time on the Gnais now. Uh, and, and brings the Gneisen down, down to some significantly low health. In fact, the Gneisen now, I think, is flood. Yeah, he is flooding. And uh, uh, Infidel does have torpedoes out, again, against the Georgia as well. Don't remember if those are going to hit. And nice, there, uh, Infidel does kill the Gneisen now. So the Allies uh, are continue to fall behind here. Uh, they still have a one-ship deficit uh, despite Infidel's efforts, and he's up well past 100,000 in damage. And we're not even 10 minutes into the into the match. Fortunately, Infidel's getting lit up here by planes again. Uh, he has dropped smoke to try to get himself into some concealment. It is very important at this point with Infidel being the only destroyer left on his team to stay alive to try to preserve spotting and some of the area control that the Benham is very good for doing. Uh, but he's going to um, get out here in just a moment. Now, one thing I don't know if people notice that um, Infidel generally has been... Uh, doing a really good job managing Ooh, there he gets a sad uh, kill on the fletcher i think yeah I, the fletcher was definitely over on the east side i don't remember if we had him respotted and he just ran into those a uh, torpedo spread that was sent toward uh in that direction but in any case uh infidel's actually been quite good about managing his aa only turning it on once he actually gets detected by the planes uh, and not beforehand. Uh, and that's generally a very good strategy for all destroyers to take, uh, or concealment destroyers in particular, uh, is that they not activate AA at all uh, until they are actually detected by planes um, so that they aren't detected early because if they, most destroyers, their AA uh, range is further than their aerial detection range. And if their AA goes off, um, they will get detected sooner than they would otherwise. So Infidel continues to work here on the east flank, trying to uh, keep these opponents pushed off. But you'll notice now that the uh, Bravo cap uh, has been is being uh, contested by the Akatsuki, which was briefly detected on the south side of the cap. He is currently, excuse me, currently in smoke. And uh, Infidel is going to make his way over, uh, I think, to the Bravo cap, try to head off that Akatsuki. Again, also trying to get these uh, ships down. Uh, so between uh, Infidel's torpedo strikes, the what should hopefully be some relatively easy cycles from the aircraft carrier against uh, some of these opponents, as well as the Azuma 
Um, hopefully, we can get some of these uh, ships down. That was a nice maneuver there by the Miyoko. In fact, I think it was the Miyoko. I, I when I mentioned earlier at the uh, Delta Cap when Infidel's uh, radio location changed abruptly, it may have been the Miyoko that was uh, coming around the corner there that we had previously not seen. Now, speaking of radio location, Infidel's has switched over to the Akatsuki, which presumably is still in the Delta Cap. Uh, and uh, Infidel is going to try to make his way over there, I think, eventually. Ooh, there. No, the Inf the Akatsuki has just come out of smoke. He's quite low health. Uh, this is a fight that uh, a Benham should be able to win, even with its relatively uh, lower HP pool uh, than other U.S. Navy destroyers. He does definitely have more health than the Akatsuki, and he has uh, should have better gun systems here. I think these are Fletcher guns, uh, and he has a set of four. Uh, so he should be able to get the destroyer down. Yes, he does. But given that the fact that the destroyer didn't send uh, or didn't fire his guns tells me that he probably sent torpedoes. So Infidel's making a good choice here. Yep, in fact, there they are. Uh, Infidel has made the turn in and he's going to look to take back the uh, Delta or Charlie um, Bravo cap, excuse me, for the allies. Uh, so the, the um, opponents. Uh, have breached through toward the carrier, uh, but I think the Miyoko was quite low health. Unfortunately, we don't see him right now. Uh, and between the carrier strikes, and, oh, there he is. Okay, yeah, he's down to about a third health. And the Azuma, they should be able to get the Miyoko down, uh, and that will help. Yes, there goes the Miyoko. So well done by the Azuma. And we're just about to get the uh, the uh, Bravo cap here. But uh, again, the opponents had have held... All four caps for quite a while so they have a fairly significant point lead but the allies have done a very good job starting to get some of the ship situation turned around so they've now have a three ship advantage so a two to one advantage uh with a uh this is an iowa and a jean bar and the last ship is the carrier so uh bravo has now been secured and uh infidel is going to head over to support his his allies here at alpha now, this is where the title of the video comes into play. Um, Infidel's going to make some choices here about how he sends these torpedoes. You'll notice that the Jean Bar, his ally Jean Bar, as well as the Synop, uh, are moving toward the opponents here at the cap. And um, th these are sends th that I personally probably would not have done, or at least I would have been extremely hesitant to do, because I do have my allies that are moving toward these opponents. And there's a pretty good likelihood with the range and with the positioning that I could hit one of my allies here. In fact, we can see the John Barr looks like one of his turrets has been completely destroyed. So he's only operating with one turret. Um, so this is the part that I thought was a little controversial. Um, I did ask uh, Infidel about it and he, his take was that, well, first, obviously, there was a lot of urgency to get some of these kills. There is the Kraken Unleashed, so very well done, and Confederate on top of it. So he has earned two devastating strikes, um, First Blood, uh, Confederate, and High Caliber. I'm sorry, and uh, Kraken Unleashed, not High Caliber. I mean, maybe that will be coming, I don't know. Uh, but um, again, that was kind of a controversial send, but it didn't end up hitting any of the uh allies fortunately he is going to send some more torpedoes here it looks like or might uh against the iowa uh, but again this is a very risky move now again when i spoke with infidel about it obviously there was a lot of urgency to get kills because the opponents still have a significant point advantage yeah he's sending some more torpedoes here now the uh, the um Iowa, his allied Iowa, or John Barr, excuse me, is sailing away. So this send is probably a little safer. Um, but the previous ones, I think Infidel was expecting that his, um, his allies were going to disengage or be further from where his, his torps would end up expiring. And so that it wasn't going to be quite as likely that he would hit them. Is he going to hit the Iowa here? Those torpedoes looked pretty good. Yes, he gets one on the stern, and he gets the Iowa down to just a few thousand hit points. He's going to uh, fire at HE here. There is High Caliber. I called it a little early. He did end up getting it, after all. Uh, and now he's going to use Armor Piercing, because this uh, Iowa is flat broadside. And he will generally be able to get better uh, damage more rapidly. 
uh, by using armor piercing into the superstructure and he does finish off the Iowa giving him his sixth kill uh, he's up to a hundred almost 190,000 in damage looking to secure the alpha cap uh, but with the time remaining and with the point spread they do really need to sink the carrier and the carrier has moved up close enough that Infidel has got him spotted and he's going to be putting in some long range uh, fire here. Uh, I think currently using, yeah, currently using armor piercing, getting a, oh, there was a pen. I don't remember how much damage he's going to be getting here because this is kind of a long shot and these rainbow arcs are going to be coming down on the deck. And so I suspect that he's likely to get a, a more uh, bounces, but he's actually getting not, he's getting a few pens here. He's uh, st still firing armor piercing and, um, does get his second solo cap. He's up to 195,000 in damage. And now the question is, is he going to get the kill on the Shokaku? More shells coming in from allies. There's the salvo from the Jean Bar when the Jean Bar gets the kill on the carrier. So very, very nicely done. Thank you very much, Infidel, for sharing this uh, replay. This is indeed an exceptionally strong boat. Over 3,100 base XP, a very impressive result. And uh, so thank you very much, like I said, for sharing. I hope everybody enjoyed the replay and the commentary. Please do leave your comments below. And as always, we hope to see you out there on the virtual seas, and we wish you happy sailing.